grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Eastertide. I'm so delighted that you're here with us. I welcome those of you who are joining us on Zoom as well. We want to say a special um, prayer or have in our thoughts all of our families who are traveling this weekend. It's we're in the middle of spring break for some of our schools. We're at the beginning of spring break for others. So we wish them joy as they're together and traveling mercies as they travel home. Let us now begin worship by preparing our hearts and minds with song. Please join me now in our responsive reading, actually in our call to worship, printed in our bulletin. Let us read this responsively. We gather today with renewed life in Christ. Let us walk together in love and hope. Let us now rise and sing together our opening hymn. Be thou my vision, O God of my heart, not be all else to me say.
join me in our unison prayer printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. God of hope, awaken us to your holy presence in every corner of life. Free us from fear, worry, and defeat. Open our eyes to your loving and creative presence, always active in the world. Open our hearts to this new day of hope and joy. Now, please take a moment to listen for God's loving voice for you today. If it is the voice of love, it is the voice of God. Scripture tells us that God so loved the world. God so loved you and God so loved me that he sent his child Jesus that we might have life, abundant, creative life. Know that God loves you and be at peace. As people filled with God's peace let us share this peace with one another by saying, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ. So this is the time when we have our children's time. Since so many, or all of our children almost, are traveling, we're still going to celebrate. 
Some of them might be with us on Zoom, and we celebrate that we all have this child within us and our beloved children of God. I was going to talk with the children about what we celebrated last week, which was Easter, that God brings new life, new birth, and creativity and beauty into the world. And because we're created in God's image, we do too. So I'm going to share this book with you. Some of you who have children might be familiar with it. Does anyone know this book, The Dot? This is a reminder that we all have beauty and creativity in us, no matter what anyone has told us. The Dot. Art class was over, but Vashti sat glued to her chair. Her paper was empty. Vashti's teacher leaned over the blank paper. Ah, a polar bear in a snowstorm, she said. <laughs> Very funny, said Vashti. I just can't draw. Her teacher smiled. Just make a mark and see where it takes you. Vashti grabbed a marker and gave the paper a good strong jab there. Her teacher picked up the paper and studied it carefully. Hmm. She pushed the paper toward Vashti and quietly said, now sign it. Vashti thought for a moment, well, maybe I can't draw, but I can sign my name. The next week, when Vashti walked into art class, she was surprised to see what was hanging above her teacher's desk. It was the little dot she had drawn, her dot, all framed in swirly gold. Hmm, I can make a better dot than that. She opened her never-before-used set of watercolors and set to work. Vashti painted and painted a red dot, a blue dot, a yellow dot, a purple dot, the blue mixed with the yellow. She discovered that she could make a green dot. Vashti kept experimenting lots of little, little dots in many colors. If I can make little dots, I can make big dots too. Vashti splashed her colors with the bigger brush on bigger paper to make bigger dots. Vashti even made a dot by not painting a dot. At, at the school art show, a few weeks later, Vashti's dots made quite a splash. Vashti noticed a little boy gazing up at her. You're a really great artist, he said. I wish I could draw. I bet you can, said Vashti. Me? No, not me. I can't draw. A straight line? I can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Vashti smiled. She handed the boy a blank sheet of paper. Show me. The boy's pencil shook as he drew his line. Vashti stared at the boy's squiggle, and then she said, please sign it. And that's how God is with us, always inviting us, even when we think we're not creative, to bring forth our creative love into the world. We are going to celebrate now another creative thing in our midst, and that's the new life that comes to us with a new member. Ryan has been a part of this family for a long time now. Many of us know him because he served as our uh, director for youth and families. Is that the right title you had, Ryan? And now he is back with us, bringing new life to our community as a new member, and we're going to welcome him this morning. So to that end, I'm going to invite Ryan, you to come forward, and Terry, if you would come forward, and Doug, if you would come forward as well.
Ryan, as I said, for many among us, you need no invitation. I mean, introduction. Of course, you are always invited. <laughs> you need no, <laughs> no introduction. Um, but for other of others of us, you might be a new face. And you've been up to lots of things, maybe, since some of us have heard what you've been doing. So I'm going to ask Terry to introduce you, even though we know you so well, to the congregation with words of welcome. Thank you so much for those words. Ryan, you've chosen to join this congregation because you have experienced something of the light here. There's a candle on our communion tables this morning lit especially for you as a reminder that you also bring something of the light of Christ to us. And for that, we are so grateful. Since we are Presbyterian and we like to do things decently in order, I now invite our clerk of session, which is our board, Doug, to present Ryan as a candidate. <laughs> it's okay. You're all as welcome here as you are. <laughs> Hey, Doug. I think we might, I'm going to ask him a question first, if that's okay. okay. Thank you so much. First, we're going to ask you a question, Ryan, and then we will commit to you. Ryan, do you reaffirm your baptismal vows, trusting in God's grace in Jesus Christ, and do you desire to become part of the fellowship and ministry of this congregation? If so, say, I do. I do. Wonderful. Thank you, Doug. With joy and thanksgiving, 
we welcome Ryan to share with us in God's ministry in this place. We promise to love, encourage, and support him and his family. We promise to share the good news of the gospel with him and to look for God's presence in him and together to learn from and follow Jesus Christ by loving and serving in the world. Ryan, we welcome to you, this, you to this community. And as I said, reminded that you bring something of the light to us. We have some gifts of welcome for you. These were to be for the children to give you, but since they're not here, those of us who are children at heart can come forward, maybe one, two, three, four, six of us. Does someone want to come forward and take a flower and give it to Ryan and welcome him? And we also have a loaf of bread here. I'll put the flowers here. And I'll put the bread here and so people can offer that. Well, I offer Ryan, you some words. Ryan, we welcome you with these flowers as a reminder of the joy, creativity, and beauty God brings in having you among us. We also welcome all the people, places, traditions that have brought you to this place and enrich your spirituality and enrich us. I know you have been a faithful practitioner of Buddhist meditation, and we honor that beauty in you and the way your meditative practices are enriching our prayer life together. We also bring you this bread, remembering Jesus said, I am the bread of life. This particular bread is sourdough bread, and we bring that to you because, of course, it is traditional in our area, but also because the yeast of the sourdough can be passed down from generation to generation to generation, and in this bread, we are reminded those who have come before us, where we are now, and those who come after, and the way we are all connected through this bread. May Christ's loving presence be revealed to you and to us when we break bread together in this place and out in the world. Please bring your gifts on behalf of all of us to Ryan. Now let us have one moment of closing prayer. Let us pray. We stand before you, O oh God, in gratitude for Ryan, who stands before us this day. We know he, like all of us, have a unique path here. We pause so that he can give quiet thanks for those who have been important figures along his journey as we give uh, quiet thanks for those on ours. Now empower us, O oh God, to be a loving church home for Ryan. Help us welcome him with deeper and deeper. Help us to welcome him deeper and deeper into the full life of this congregation. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. And we look forward to celebrating Ryan even more fully in our fellowship following the service. So welcome and welcome Olivia. <laughs> Blessings on you, brother. Will you pray with me as we pray our prayer for, for illumination? Let us pray. God of joyful noise and peaceful silence, still in us every voice but your own, open our ears to your word, our eyes to your beauty, our mouth to your nourishment, and our hearts to your song. Amen.
Good morning. The scripture I'm reading this morning is from John. It's John 21, 1 to 14. Jesus appears to seven disciples. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the son of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he were naked, and jumped into the lake. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the full net of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a 100 yards off. When they'd gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Our second scripture lesson for this morning comes to us from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. It is merely one verse. Listen to this translation from the English Standard Version. God has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, God has put eternity into the people's heart. Beauty. It's part of our inheritance. Beauty comes from creativity. We are made in the image of God, who from the beginning created life, and in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus did and always will be creating something beautifully new. We celebrated this last Sunday on Easter morning, but Easter is not just one day. Easter is a whole season, and more than a season, it is a whole way of life. So this Sunday, we are going to celebrate that made in God's image, we are deeply creative as well. It is who we are even if we don't think of ourselves in that way. Maybe we've forgotten or someone has lied to us, defining creativity so narrowly and telling us we are not the creative one in the family, or in the classroom, or in our workplace. But creating beauty is not just simply what we do. Made in God's image, it is who we are. So this morning, you don't have to do anything. You can just be. I'm going to invite you to merely be, to let go, and to let God's creative, creative beauty speak in to and through you without effort in a few moments. And we're going to try to do this with two simple, similar practices. One is called Lectio Divina, using scripture. The other is Visio Divina, using an image. We may use the image inserted in our bulletin or another image. 
We'll do both, one right after another. Some of us may be familiar with this practice of Lectio Divina. Don't worry if you're not. It ba dates back to an early m monastic communities and was used as a preparation for communion, which we will partake in and celebrate this morning. For those of us who aren't familiar with it, I will read just one line of scripture. I'll read it three times, giving us a prompt. Just let whatever arises in you arise. No effort needed. Something might come up for you in the text. Even if what arises is, this isn't working for me, that's okay. Just let it be and just be open. It's okay to be wherever you are. If using this second scripture once I start isn't really working for you, then I invite you to reflect on the first scripture lesson we heard. If you even want to look at it in your Bible, you can open your Bible to page 109 in the Newer Testament, so towards the back of the Bible, and you can reflect on that. But for now, in preparation for trying this creative act, let's take a few moments just to quiet ourselves. Get really comfortable, move so that you feel comfortable. Get in a comfortable position. Maybe become aware of the breathing of the person next to you. Maybe you even feel an inkling of God's presence. I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes and take a few really deep breaths. <sighs> Asking God, divine love, whatever the word is that describes it best for you. Asking divine love to quiet your mind your body, and your heart. I will read this passage slowly. Don't analyze it. Just let the words blow over you. Just sink in and savor them. God has made everything beautiful in its time. God has put eternity into people's hearts. I will read the passage again. Notice any word that draws you in or an image that might come to mind. Notice a feeling that arises. Is there something that attracts you or some resistance of some kind? Invite the spirit to reveal how the passage might be speaking to you. God has made everything beautiful in its time. God has put eternity into people's hearts. I'll read the passage one final time. Allow the scripture to lead you into prayer maybe a response to or from God. It can be spoken in your head or silent. It can be a picture or an image. God has made everything beautiful in its time. God has put eternity into people's hearts. Now rest in the awareness of God's presence. 
remaining open to anything else that divine, life-giving love, infinite creativity, the spirit might be stirring in your heart. Simply be with that. Expect nothing. Just connect with that divine that goes deeper than words. Just relax in this moment and know you are loved. I invite you to take a final deep breath to come back to this moment. Maybe move your fingers and toes for just a moment. Open your eyes. It's okay if this did not resonate, but if it did, or if some word or image or something came to your mind and you want to share it, I invite you to do that. Yes, Robin. Yes, Terry. It's okay. <laughs> this is a place we can be who we are, and tears is part of the healing, joyful love of God flowing through us. for sharing it. Thank you. Yes, Doug. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Yes, Helen. Oh. We still know that I'm God. I love that it came to you in an image. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for sharing. I know for keeping what their experience in their heart. For some of you, it came as images. So we're going to take just a couple of minutes 
and engage with God's creativity through images. This is called not Lectio Divina, but Visio Divina, which is a way of divine creative seeing or a way of hearing God through what we see. It shares ancient roots with Lectio Divina as well. And it's another way of encountering God, creativity, the divine. You'll find in your bulletin um, a work of art that I invite you to take out. You can use that if that is not resonating for you. I also have some photographs. Someone like a photograph? Otherwise, I'll leave them up here for people to take later and to use at home for the same practice. What I invite you to do is to do the same, take a couple of deep breaths if you need to move around to get situated again, to get comfortable. Take some deep breaths. Sometimes I like to imagine the spirit like a bird with a long tail swooping down through the sanctuary and being among us. May the spirit be flowing through us in these moments. I invite you to quiet your heart. Invite divine love, God, in. And I invite you to gaze upon this piece of art. If you are at home and you don't have access to this, if you are with us on Zoom, I invite you to look at a piece of art on your wall, maybe a photograph on a bookshelf or even out your window. So much to see out our windows here in the sanctuary as well. And for just a moment, I invite you to look at this image or whatever you're looking at and to stay with the very first thing that you see or that jumped out at you when you saw it. Keep your attention on that one part of the image that first catches your eye. And breathe deeply into that and let your gaze just be with that for a quiet moment. Now let your eyes gaze at the whole image. Take your time and look at every part of it. See it all. Reflect on it for a moment, maybe inviting the spirit to reveal how this image might be speaking to you today. What emotions does it evoke in you? What does it stir up? Take a moment to ask, does this image invite you into a conversation with divine love? If so, is there something God is saying to you or through the picture you want to say to God or the world?
in these final moments of silence, listen for any invitation God might have for you and know that you are loved. I invite you to come back to the room. Take a breath. Maybe move your hands or your feet a little to bring you back into this moment. And I invite you again, if this image spoke to you anywhere, way to share. If it didn't, that's okay. It is right to be where you are. I invite you to open your eyes and be present. Does anyone want to share this experience, what it, what it meant for them if something spoke to you? Yes. Oh, yes, the dot. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Yes, Ryan. Yes, Millie, please. Oh, any way you're thinking is the way. Oh, yes. Mm. No, Millie, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us, that beautiful image from God through you. Thank you. So beautiful. Beautiful. 
this practice, these practices are always available to us. If in the midst of our day, we need a moment to connect with God, love, the divine, we can merely stop, pick up a line or a practice or look at a tree or an image and just invite the spirit to reconnect us reconnect us to that creative, loving, overflowing spirit of God in us and through us. And to remember that we were created beautiful just the way we are. And that God's creativity is always flowing through us no matter what we do. And I wanna tell you that the world needs your beauty the world needs your creativity and your joy that flows from that. Sometimes we're called to create things just for the sheer beauty of it. Sometimes, especially as you were saying, Robin, I think we're called to create beauty in the darkest of times as a ray of hope. Our human souls need beauty, beauty that blooms from creativity and care. It can take the form of just being. It can take the form of our work or our play. It can take the form of generosity. It can take the form of tomato plants in our justice garden. It might take the form of art or music or numbers or blueprints or hugging a person, it might take the form of resting. It can be a form of resistance. It can be a form of power in the world. It can take the form of a delicious, nutritious, nourishing meal in the flavors that say home to calm a stomach and comfort a heart. It can take the form of bread and juice around which we will gather and of which we will partake in a few moments. May the God of ultimate beauty and creativity and love be present in all of it. Hallelujah. Amen.
Friends, scripture tells us that people will come from north and south, from east and west to sit together at the table of God. So let us come saying, God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God. We give you thanks, O God, for the beauty of creation, for the blessings and miracles of every day, and for the gift of life. You set us in this world to be truth-tellers and peacemakers, living in harmony with all of creation. We give you thanks that when we turn from the ways of peace, you call us back with love. Jesus shows us the way to a new world community, one in which the last is first, justice prevails and resources are shared so that all people may lead lives of dignity and feel valued. The world rebelled against this message and he was crucified out of fear, but death cannot defeat life. Jesus breathed the spirit upon his followers and gave birth to the church Christ's body in the world. Holy Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Holy Lamb of God, you take away the sin. your peace, grant us your peace, grant us your peace. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and grapes from the earth. By your spirit, make us one with all who share this feast. Unite us in love and energize us to work for a world of peace and justice for all. We raise up to you now prayers for those in need, O oh God, saying, God, in your grace, you hear our prayers. You hear our prayers. you hear our prayer. You hear our prayer. God, we pray for those suffer suffering in the Middle East. 
We think of Palestinian children and adults who are hungry today, Lord. We think of those who come to their aid who are met with violence. We pray that we might be part of a world where we see each person and all of us connected together as brothers and sisters. May your peace come. God, in your grace, you hear our prayer. We close our time of prayer by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Please use the name for God with the word that is most meaningful for you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of Jesus' arrest, he took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, Take Eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood, given for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it in remembrance of me. For every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember the saving life of Jesus Christ until he comes. The table is set. Let us now gather and feast. Oh, I invite the servers to now come forward. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, I got it. I'm having that kind of morning. Hmm. I invite anyone who feels called to come forward. Everyone is welcome at God's table.
If you are have already partaken, that is fine. Blessings upon you. If you have not, I invite you now to partake. The bread of life, the cup of love. pray together. May we carry in our hearts the peace embodied in this bread and cup, strengthen our love for one another and for all creation, and let us be peace in the world. Amen. All that we are and all that we have comes from a generous and loving God so let us generously give. Our morning offering will now be taken and received, given and received. <laughs> Spin down a long road and it got dirty on the way. If I give it to you, can you make it clean and wash the stain away? Well, you can have my heart if you don't mind.
Let us pray. God of grace, thank you for these gifts born from our labor and your love expressed through us. May they be used to further your creative work of love in the world. Amen. Thank you. We have a f I have a few quick announcements here. Um, first of all, we are invited so graciously to the Islamic Center of North America. They are having a mosque open house today to share the beauty of the holy month of Ramadan. There will be time to discuss the spiritual insights and lessons from the Muslim practice of fasting, as well as some basics of Islamic beliefs and practices. It's a wonderful time for us to gather and celebrate with these sisters and brothers up in Nevada. So you are welcome and invited, and I can give you more details after the service if you are interested. Um, four to six. Yes, I should have put that in here, but I come see me if you want the exact details. I have them downstairs. <coughs> um, let's see. Uh, next Sunday, I am excited to say that we will welcome Sue Saunders from the Envi Environmental Action Committee um, in San Anselmo to speak. Um, I hope you'll be here. We will also have Ryan here to help lead worship for us, as will Bridget. I will be away starting tonight through next Sunday night with my family, um, celebrating and having some time away for spring break. Where am I going? We're going to some national parks. We're going to go to Pinnacles National Park, and we're going to go to Death Valley, and we're going to do a little route around there. So since I will be camping there in places where there is no cell phone coverage at all, I'm told, um, you won't be able to reach me but you will be in the able hands of your deacons, Sharon Hamilton, and also Robin and Mai are all here. And um, please reach out to them if you have pastoral concerns or worries. If there is a very serious, which I do not anticipate or pray there will not be pastoral emergency, they have the contact of a pastor in the area who will be in touch with you, okay? And then if there are business things, Christina is here in the office, and we have our able elders and de uh, elders who will be here to do any of the work of the church. So I will miss you next week. I'll be with you in spirit and look forward to being with you the following week. Next Saturday, I invite you to be here for our big tomato plant sale. Please come at, yay! Is it 10 a.m.? Come at 10 a.m. These over a 1,000 plants have been lovingly raised like precious children. They will be handed over and sent out into the community. All the proceeds from that will go to serve um, those who are hungry and food insecure in Marin and around the world. So please come partake in that. So we'll have a big environment celebration next weekend. I think that's all my announcements. Is there any? Yes, please. Thank you so much for doing that. I ask your forgiveness. I do try to keep the service to one hour so people can plan their day. We did run over today because we had extra celebrations. So thank you for your uh, grace with that this Sunday. We'll be back to 60 minutes in two weeks. So. I can't <laughs> promise about next week. <laughs> uh, anything else for the good of people? If not, let us close our celebration with song. All right. Well, bad news. This verse has 90 verses. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a new song, but uh, I encourage you to, uh, to listen up and sing it bravely. Um, it's just a, 
a wonderful, it's, it's called The Hymn of Promise, which I like. All right, so if you're not sure what to do, listen to Sharon. <laughs> a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season something God alone can see there's a song in every silence seeking word and melody there's a dawn in every darkness Something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our go out into the world to love and serve God by letting your creativity flow and may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ the communion of the Holy Spirit and the love of God be with you today and every day amen <laughs>